All right, Shalom Rastafari. We're going to deal with it's part two of this, the God particle, right? The God particle, the black dot, E-T, e, e, T, uh, S, Alpha, uh, Tau, and the Ethiopian, all right? So this is going to be the second part of it. And just going over, just to connect this with the first part, we're speaking on Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? And we began off speaking um, and, and showing this demonstration right here of the, of the Israelites. And this is a suppressed um, art and fact that has um, um, been uh, snapshotted here and circulated by some fellow uh, Hebrew Israelites. And we were pointing to how this was the cross or the crossing over in the Old Testament, Fasika Pesach, and then we have the New right, with Yeshua HaMoshiach in the New Testament, right? And now how both of them goes together if one would receive his righteousness. Now, in connection with that, we're speaking about Christ's resurrection body. Now, remember, Christ took on our sinful flesh, right, as Beta Israel, he took on our sinful flesh. The Bible even declares that he came to save his people from their sin. Now, when we touch on the Canaanite portion, hopefully, when we get around to that, the, the, this false Canaanite lie, because they're presenting a lot of black people now, like in the Middle East and Israel, and they're playing a trick on them. They're having them go on film, probably paying them or scaring them or whatever, and they're saying, yes, I am a Canaanite, I'm a Canaanite, right, in order for them to have a slave population. Because remember, these are Old Testament, right, converted Old Testament Jews who refuse Yeshua HaMoshiach, you know what I'm saying? And they refuse him because he is black, right? The, 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 the Babylonian Talmudic Jews, they understand this. If you go and study their Talmud, what they say of Yeshua HaMoshiach, and there's the other Israel video out there. And if you read that, that just gives you a, like a surface of that. But there's a deep, 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 deep reason behind this. You understand when it calls them the synagogue of Satan, there's a reason for that. They are the opposition, right, to the rise of the true Moshiach, right, the rise of the true Moshiach, the rise of the black Christ, right? So we have to understand the connection with the Ethiopian, right? When it says Ethiopia, this man was born there, Psalm 87. When it says that... Um, Princes shall come out of Egypt, Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to God, right? Did not they stretch forth their hands to God, to God in the flesh, to the Bain Ha Elohim, who is the symbol of the corporate Israel, right? He is the symbol of the corporate Israel. Now remember, he is the head, right? As we go a little bit deeper in this melanin, melanin connection, with the black dot and with the God particle and with Christ's um, salvation through the cross. Even when we look at the um, et, right, in the Bible, if you look in Revelation 1 and 8, it will say in the King James Greek-based interpretation, I am the Alpha and Omega. Well, Yeshua HaMoshiach spoke Hebrew and some believe Aramaic. You know, some even think that quite possibly a form of Amharic. Of course, some would try to dismiss that, you understand? But they try to dismiss that the Egyptians were black. They try to dismiss that Yeshua HaMoshiach was black. I mean, even Jews are coming out um, saying that the whole Jewish thing, this modern European Ashkenazi Jew, is actually that was made up recently. That's one of the reasons why they hate on, um, on, on Iran. And there's a certain white Jews, Torah Jews, who are more and more admitting this truth as they're seeing the wickedness of their own kind fulfilling in, 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 in deadly color, you understand, these biblical prophecies from Old Testament to New Testament. So really what he said was, I am the, the Ha'alef, right, and Ani is the Ha'tau, Alef Tau, or A and T. They used to say the, the, they would say in English, the A to Z, right? The A to Z, or the beginning and the end of, of the Hebrew alphabet. Now, we learn that this is a particle, 
as a part of speech, right? And they say it's, it's used in a demonstrative sense of entity. Entity is being. Like when Yahweh says, says that, um, when it said of Yahweh that he is who he is. Yahweh means he who was, he who is, he who will be. You know what I'm saying? Which is the true Judaic um, trinity, if you please. Now, I, I know a lot of folks are going to say a lot of stuff because they're going to look at other religions and in India and here and there, but you have to recognize there was a time when the Rebbe, right, when the true rabbis, when they were black rabbis, when they admitted or said amen to the Trinity, all right, to the Trinity. And we, we've touched on this even previously. We have God the Father, right? We have the Son, even Old Testament proverb says so, right? What is his name and what is his son's name, if thou canst tell, right? Yah and Yeshua, right? But then his people too, Israel, right? His people were, he, he pours out upon them in this Joel time, he pours out upon them his spirit. But in the same time of pouring out, he's pouring out wrath, on the unrepentant, on the Goyim. This is why it's so important for us to repent and to recognize what is his salvation, what is his righteousness, wh why repentance is necessary to end the curses. You understand how Yeshua HaMoshiach already ended these curses, but because of disobedience, because of miseducation, because of false prophets and preachers and pastors, ones continue to live in sin. Remember what Moses says, I put before you this day the way of life and the way of death, a, a blessing and a curse. Choose you this day. All right? So this is why the knowledge is very important because um, as uh, Romans says, that they have a zeal for God. You understand? But they, but they lack the knowledge. They lack the true knowledge of the Son of God. All right? Yeshua HaMoshi is not just another black man. He's not just another black man that was lynched, and he wasn't murdered. He laid down his life, and it's demonstrable through the God particle, that melanin that is spiritually charged, right, that melanin that is spiritually charged by way of our main faith through grace, through that admission in God and Ha Elohim's righteousness. Now, when we look at this Alpha Tav, right, Alpha Tav, or as a, as a particle, et or at, right? It says it's a sign of the definite direct object not translated. I want you to get that. It's not translated in English, but generally preceding and indicating the accusative. So the total count is 22 times. If you look in Psalm 119, which is acronistic in the good old King James Version, you'll see you'll have all 22 of the Hebrew letters right there. So he's saying, I'm the beginning and end. Now, when it was translated into the Greek, right, because that was the popular language. You know what I'm saying? Almost like English is the popular language right now among most of the lost sheep. The same way it was, because they were still scattered outside. There was a diaspora, as Jude um, um, tells us. Oh, no, actually, actually it's, it's, well, Jude mentions it kind of, but it's actually James tells us. In, in, in James 1, there was even a di diaspora at that time. But now let's go to, so we have this 22. That's pointing to the Aleph Beit, right? The Alpha Beit, right? So here, let's scroll up. Here we have um, the strong number is the H, the H853. And it's so, if you say G, then you're going to go to the Greek words. The H is for the Hebrew when you're looking up these Strong's numbers. And the Blue Leather Bible is a pretty excellent site, the way it's arranged, so you can get into the actual um, evidence, right, and, and study it and, and pray over it and ask for the Holy Spirit and wisdom and guidance, right, and be convicted in your own heart and with the evidence of what the truth is. Know the truth for yourself, all right? All um, right. It says that it matches the Hebrew S. You see this? S, right? Like the abbreviation for Ethiopian S. And it occurs 22 times, which is the Hebrew alphabet. He says, I am the Alpha and Omega. Now, you have to remember that in the New Testament, right? In the New Testament, um, there wasn't, when they talk about Scripture in the New Testament, the Scripture they, they know of was the Torah, right? 
um, the five books, the Chumash. They knew of the Nabim, now called the Nabim, and they knew of the Tehillim, or, or the Mezmur Dawit, the Psalms of David and the other songs. That's what they call scripture. So when you read in the New Testament and it says it is written in the scriptures, it's not talking about the New Testament. It's talking about the Old Testament or Torah, right? Um, and there's a lot of lawless Christians that basically, you know, that's why they cut it out. That's why they usually have a Bible that is usually New Testament, right? But in 18 verses, right? So there's 18 verses. Now notice this numeric. There's 18 verses in the Hebrew concordance of the King James Version of the Bible. So what's the first verse, right? Let's look at the first verse. Now every time this is, this, this is um, mentioned, it, it's very interesting. Right? Every time this is mentioned, there's something about this that has to do with entity. There's something about this that has to do with Christ. Remember how, the, how John 1 and verses 1 to 3, it speaks of Christ that in the beginning, you understand, um, was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Let's just look at this for, for a moment right here. In order for you to understand why Christ would say, I am the Alpha and Omega, and what was the significance to his Hebrew, his black Ethiopian Hebrew and Judahite um, disciples and, and the faithful ones. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning, the beginning. Remember beginning? Bereshit, Bereshit. Right, let's go right here for a moment. And see if we can bring this up right here so you can see this in the Masoretic Hebrew for yourself. Now, remember, this part is not translated, right? So we see the translation, but the real significance here is not even translated. Now, let's, let's know this is, this is Genesis 1 and 1. Now, as we read right here, John, right, John's gospel, which differs from the other synoptic gospels, some say it's more of a metaphysical or spiritual, right? Um, I, we like to call it the Moshiach's Kabbalah, his Kabbalah, what we are to receive. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Ha Elohim, and the Word was Ha Elohim. The same was in the beginning, right? It was in the Bereshit, the Bereshit, right? It was in the Berasit right, in the beginning, and you see it down here, right, you see it down here, the beginning, right, this means beginning, they have in, but really they should put the be, see, this is be, re, a, she, yod, tau, right, they have the re, or the resh, which means head, right, now this be, it means house, right, so there's a symbolic logic to it as well, but it says this in verse 3. This is his pre-incarnation work. Remember, Yeshua HaMoshiach existed, right, even before he was born in the flesh of Kedistin Gomariam, in the, that Ethiopian, that black Israelite um, maiden, right? All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. Right? In him, in him was life. Right? In him was life. Overstand this. And the life was the light of men, was the light of humanity. Right? Remember, Israel was supposed to be the light to the Gentiles, and Yeshua is the light to Israel and to the world or all who will receive him in spirit and in truth. And the light shineth in darkness. Right, the illumination, the knowledge of God shineth among the ignorant, the idiotes, right, the idiots, right, and the darkness, the ignorant do not comprehendeth it not. This is why they did not translate the et, right, the et, the et, right. And when we compare this, let's see what, what our time check is, right. Uh, when we compare this, right. So let's go down here. So we have Elohim. So it basically says something to the effect of um, um, be, they vow it like this. So, bere, bereshit bara, right? Elohim et, right? Et ha shama shama 
um, Ha Shamam, and it's a Ha Shamam, and this is a Ha Shamayim. But anyway, let's go on. Where or where? They'll say where, but where or where? At Ha Eretz or Aretz, Aretz, right? Aretz is the land. So they don't translate that. They say in the beginning, right? In the beginning, right? In the beginning, he created, right? He created um, God. I'll say that that he created the one who created is Elohim, right? Um, they don't translate the heavens, and they don't translate the land. Isn't this interesting? Right? This how uh, this is the Alpha Omega that he says, I am the Alpha Omega, and it's translated as the beginning and the end. Now, notice right here. Notice what they do right here. They, they, they get a little slick willy right here. Right? Notice how they get slick willy up here. They, they say et here, and then they point you to create it. Right? They point you to create it. You see that? They say, um, see, they had a mistake. It's Shamayim. Right, Shamayim. I know, I know. I've read this many times before. Right, so you have to be up on. And this looks like a bad vowel here. I don't know, but it says Ha Shamam. They're, they're missing a yod. Right, they're missing a yod that which is the hand of God. Right, or the hand of God. Right, which is actually linked with the yota or the iota when we speak about the black dot and the God particle. Right, but it says Et Alpha. Tau, or as you're used to Alpha Omega, Shamayim, right? The heaven, really the heavens. That should be the heavens, according to the Hebrew, right? Et, right? Then they put and here. So does it mean that that Elohim? See, they mixed the order too, so that it will read more for non-Hebrew um, speakers and Eretz, right? Now we went a little bit deeper. Right, we say we have to go a little bit deeper in this because that ET, you know, we hear about a lot of ET. They say ET mean extraterrestrial. Does it really? ET would be like saying Alpha Tau. We would be like saying Alpha Omega, right? That's why they found those bones and started singing about Lucy in the sky with diamonds. Do you remember that? Now, we had went here, right? Do you remember the Ethiopian eunuch? We looked up Ethiopia. Right, and Ethiopia um, actually is more a New Testament sense. That's what they tell us. But we know that there's a deeper root to it. When you go to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verse 27, and it says right here that, And he rose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, or Hendike, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem.